Gender affirming care means sterilization of children, of minors, on the basis that they believe that they are members of the opposite sex, which is totally insane. Mutilation and sterilization of minors on the basis that they have a delusion. Ali Velshi is very much in favor of this. He calls it gender affirming care, and he's angry that Florida is attempting to ban it. Few states have been more hostile toward LGBTQ plus community than Florida. And soon it'll become more difficult for some transgender residents of all ages to receive gender affirming care in the states. Back in June, a state released, the state released a report which falsely stated that gender affirming care was ineffective and under researched. A team of scientists and a law professor at Yale University subsequently criticized that report for relying on pseudoscience and making misleading claims. And this is the only the latest action taken by the state that discriminates against members of the LGBT community. Late, late last month, a new law that critics call the Don't Say Gay Bill took effect, which restricts what educators can teach or say in the classroom about sexual identity and gender diversity. And the left wants indoctrination of children into these ideas. They want this sort of indoctrination. The media love this sort of stuff, by the way. I think the most bizarre, this is one of the more bizarre headlines I've seen this week, anyway. This one is from entertainment, EW.com. Okay, you ready? Ezra Miller. So if you, I'm not sure if you've been following this story, but Ezra Miller is the star of some of the DC superhero movies. He plays The Flash. Well, his recent troubles began when he was arrested in Hawaii in March for disorderly conduct and harassment after yelling obscenities and accosting a woman singing karaoke at a bar in addition to lunging at a man playing darts. And uh, there were a bunch of other incidents that were somewhat similar. And then Miller was accused in a legal complaint of grooming a child since they were eight. Additional incidents include a temporary restraining order against Miller in Massachusetts for allegedly harassing another minor and exposing three children and their mother allegedly to guns at his Vermont farmhouse. And he was charged with felony burglary for allegedly stealing alcohol at a residence in Vermont. And this, of course, was a couple of years after Miller at a bar, grabbed a woman by the throat and appeared to choke her. Hey, so here's the headline. You ready for this? Ezra Miller says they've begun treatment for complex mental health issues after a string of arrests and allegations. You getting this? So the idea here is that Ezra Miller, we're, we can now say Ezra Miller has mental illness, has mental problems, complex mental issues, according to Ezra Miller. But we must always make sure to call Ezra Miller they, because that's an objective fact. When Ezra Miller makes adjudications about his own life. He's a biological male by every possible definition of these words. When Ezra Miller says that he is a they, let's be clear, there's not a single human being on the planet who is a they because they is a plural pronoun. Unless you are more than one person, unless we have subdivided you in some weird way, this is not correct. You know, Ezra Miller says that he is a they. This we must respect. Also, we can say that this person has complex mental health issues because of all of his other behavior. But the the random changing of pronouns for no apparent reason, that is just evidence of a, re a reason-based decision about one's own gender identity. Miller says in the statement, quote, having recently gone through a time of intense crisis, I now understand that I am suffering complex mental health issues and have begun ongoing treatment. Oh, what was your first sign? Hmm. Let, hmm. Mysteries piled upon enigmas. Who knows? I want to apologize to everyone that I have alarmed and upset with my past behavior. I am committed to doing the necessary work to get back to a healthy, safe, and productive stage in my life, says they. Well done, media. I, I trust you guys completely when it comes to your take on gender-affirming care. Very important that we listen to you. By the way, their new take on gender-affirming care is that if you note that gender-affirming care is an awful euphemism for torturing children, if you note this, then this means that you are engaged in what they call stochastic terrorism. Stochastic terrorism. So they're now blaming libs of TikTok once again for actually showing video of people saying things that they say. So there's a video from a, an employee at Boston's Children's Hospital talking about giving hysterectomies to 17-year-old girls on the basis that these girls believe they are boys. Libs of TikTok posted this. This makes libs of TikTok the villain. You're not supposed to notice that they're doing this sort of stuff. If you do notice, you are the problem. Uh, here's the thing. If you say things like don't mutilate the children or if you, you know, use actual biological pronouns for people, you might get banned by your ISP, but you don't need to give that sort of control to your ISP. The sad thing is most of us have very little choice about our ISPs because ISPs actually operate like monopolies in the regions that they serve. Then they use that monopoly power to take advantage of customers. Worst of all, many ISPs log your internet activity and sell that data to other big tech companies or advertisers. To prevent ISPs from seeing my internet activity, I protect all my devices with ExpressVPN. So what is ExpressVPN, you ask? Well, it's a simple app for your computer or smartphone 
It encrypts all your network data and tunnels it through a secure VPN server so your ISP can't see any of your activity. Just think about how much of your life is on the internet. Sadly, every site you visit, video you watch, or message you send gets tracked by ISPs and other tech giants who can then sell your information for profit. That's the reason I recommend ExpressVPN as the best way to hide your online activity from your ISP. So you ask how ExpressVPN works? Let me tell you. You take out your phone, you scroll to ExpressVPN, you open it up, and behold, it says ExpressVPN not connected. Sad face emoji, but you hit the button, and now it is connected, and that means you're protected. ExpressVPN does all of that without slowing your connection. That's why it's rated the number one VPN service by TechRadar, The Verge, and countless others. So stop handing over your personal data to ISPs and other tech giants who mine your activity and sell off your information. Protect yourself with the VPN I trust to keep myself private online. Visit expressvpn.com slash Ben Shapiro Show. Get three extra months for free. Again, that's expressvpn.com slash Ben Shapiro Show to get started. Here's the actual video from Boston Children's Hospital, which, by the way, has, according to their own website, performed at least 300 gender surgeries on minors over the past four years. A child will often know that they are transgender from the moment that they have any ability to express themselves, and parents will often tell us this. We have parents who tell us that their kids, they knew from the minute they were born practically, and actions like refusing to get a haircut or standing to urinate, trying to stand to urinate, refusing to stand to urinate, trying on siblings' clothing, uh, playing with the, quote, opposite gender toys, things like that. They knew this from the time that they were born, literally from then they're born. They knew they were in the wrong body when they couldn't speak and they were pooping in their diaper. And when they like before even the stump of the umbilical cord had fallen off, we knew that this little boy was a little girl. That, that's what these parents know. This is according to Boston Children's Hospital. And they and, and they, they had to be affirmed in that gender. It was really, really important. If you note this, by the way, this makes you the bad guy. You're not supposed to notice this, which is why you have a piece. From the awful reporters Brandy Zandrosny and Phil McCausland over at NBC News, quote, Boston Children's Hospital warns employees over far-right online harassment campaign. No, you, no, wow. I mean, no one, no one should wonder about what Boston Children's Hospital is doing in mutilating children. I mean, no, no one should ask questions about that. This makes you a, akin to a terrorist, effectively speaking. According to NBC News, Boston Children's Hospital has warned employees about mounting threats and is coordinating with law enforcement after far-right activists on social media began targeting the hospital with false claims about its treatment of young transgender people. It's the most recent in a series of attempts to target hospitals for their work with trans youth, adding an ongoing wave of anti-LGBTQ sentiment that has hit libraries, schools, even a trans-inclusive L.A. spa. Uh, you remember that trans-inclusive L.A. spa? That was about a woman who happened to be a person of color complaining that a dude with balls hanging out walked into the spa naked in front of her child. That is a wave of anti-LGBTQ sentiment. The Public Relations Office of Boston Children's Hospital sent an email to employees with guidance on how to respond to harassment and threats earlier this week, citing an increase in threatening and aggressive phone calls and emails sent to the hospital commenting on treatment of transgender patients. Boston Children's Hospital first became the target of activists in recent weeks when well-followed social media accounts such as Libs of TikTok, which has often promoted quote-unquote groomer discourse that falsely linked LGBTQ teachers and parents to pedophilia, began to make a variety of false claims. Again, it, it is amazing. So if you say, by, by the way, Boston Children's Hospital then deleted this video everywhere, <laughs> just to be clear. They deleted the video so that you would never see it. Okay, but the, the idea that Libs of TikTok promoted groomer claims, they used the slang term groomer to, it was okay boomer, and so they made the joke, OK, groomer, because the idea is that there are a lot of people in public life ranging from media to education who are trying to politically groom children to believe things that are not true about their own bodies and to believe things that are not true about biology and sex. Conservative influencers, according to NBC News, with millions of followers pushed similar false talking points and fanned the flames still further. Last week, fact-checking organizations debunked the claims from white-wing accounts. Many of the same accounts continue to spread the false allegations this week. What exactly are the false allegations? They never make this clear. They, they say that it's not clear. At, at no point in this article do they say what exactly the false allegations were. It turns out that when you cut a video of somebody and you put it online and it's them talking, that's not a false allegation. That's reality. But if you, if you note this stuff, then you are responsible. You are responsible for whatever evil happens next. Uh, amazing how all of, of this works. Now, the cultural revolution is in full swing so far as, uh, so far as the left is concerned. And if you oppose it, then this makes you really bad. This is why they hate Ron DeSantis so much, because he's actually doing a good job of opposing that in the state of Florida. Who's got two thumbs and wants you to like and subscribe?